Hi guys, welcome back. This is Mahal. Uh, I'm just going to create a, a calculated application using Java. Um, previously, actually, I recorded one episode, but I was playing the music uh, at the background and someone uh, gave me a call and then requested it, that I explain everything instead of playing music at the background. So that's what, I, that's what I'm going to do right now. <coughs> just hold on. Okay, guys. Um, another person uh, gave me a call also, and then the person was like, "Wow, I'm not able to write my Java programs. I'm getting the exceptions that Java is not installed, and so on." So basically, what you need uh, in order for you to write uh, Java code or Java program is that you need what we call a Java development sheet, a JDK. Like if you go to Google and then you type Java development sheet and you go to oracle site and then yeah you can download each and every, i mean any uh, version that you want then from there you'll be able to write your java code, code. okay so in this exercise uh, we'll be using eclipse also i mean again this is the preferred ide for now um, and also in this IDE, we're gonna install what we call a window builder. Window builder actually allows you to um, create your graphical user interface by just uh, grabbing any component that, that you want. For example, a button or something you can just drag and drop to the main JPEG, right? So in order for you to install that window uh, builder, you need to go to help, uh, option and then, and then you go to install new software from there you can type window builder but you're gonna need internet right so in my case i already installed this add-in so if you click on the window builder itself it's coming like i'm checking on the pending status here Okay, so like what, sorry, once you select the window builder, uh, you'll have to come back and then select the components that you want to uh, install, right? So for me, already I've installed a window builder, so I'm not going to do it again. So I'm just going to cancel here, and then I'll create a new uh, class or an object. My PC is quite slow, so just bear with me. in time so and one of the requests was that uh, I need to upload my code on um, what do you call it again mm, come on come on come on come on github sorry my mind is somewhere else okay uh, I will try to upload the code on uh, GitHub. <laughs> uh, I will see what to do, but I'll try to upload the code here. Because the last time, I think I uploaded the Lotto one and the game one, which I need to go back to. Because I just did one episode of that, and then I just need to come back and give you guys an update. My Eclipse is, is still not responding, so I'm not sure what's happening, but we need to be patient and then, see, yeah, see what we're going to do. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Mm -hmm. I want to have... Mm -hmm. 
Okay, I think we are sorted. So I'm just gonna create a new class. Okay, so you have to go to your desired project or Java project, and then you select the option other because we're gonna use a window builder option, right? So go to other. Okay, under the window builder, just click on the JFrame and then you can name your application. So in this case, I'm just going to say a calculator package is still okay, it's fine. Guys, I need to grab something, just hold on. Uh, okay. Okay, guys. Uh, just check uh, here. We've got the source code tab and the design option, right? So you can uh, uh, create your application based on these two. So like you can work on both. It depends on what what you guys prefer, right? But I'll be working on both to show you guys uh, how we're going to create our calculator. So I, I clicked on the design view and then it's still opening. Okay, so I've got my window here, which is JFrame. Uh, okay, the first thing that I want to fix is the height. Like, I don't like this height, right? If, if I run my application, you can see that this height is not, for me, it's not good. I don't prefer it. So what I, what I can do is uh, I can click on this option, J, uh, JFrame itself, and then go to, uh, let me see. Where's my set bounds option? I don't see it. Okay, what I what you can do in this case, you can click also on the source and then you check for your set bounds. So I want my my height to be 550. So what's happening here? This argument, the hundred one is the um. Like it's like the, the X location, right? Like where your where your window will you have to start, right? Okay, let me I'll show you guys. Let me just name it 550 and then 400. Okay, you can see that my height has in, increased here, and then my width is now a bit lesser than the initial one. So I think I'm happy with this window. Um, what I don't want again is to is for us to be able to resize our window. No, I don't want that, right? So what I can do is to go to JFrame itself, and then here you see that the, the name that they, that they have given to my frame, um, yeah, my my main frame is the name frame, right? So every time if I want to call any method under the calculator main J frame, I'll have to use the keyword frame here. So because I don't want you guys to be able to resize uh, the main window, I'm just going to use the same uh, name that is given and then I'll click on set uh, resizable to false. 
once I set uh, my option to false, uh, you guys will, be not, will not be able to resize the window. So it will be grayed out itself. there's something wrong with my PC guys but uh, let's just be patient okay so I'll just say set resize I will just make it false and also I want my frame to be centered like once you launch uh, your calculator it should be in the center center sorry so set location relative to just make it now and then if I run my game again, I mean my calculator, sorry, I don't know this game thing where it comes from. So you can see that uh, my window is in, in the center, like by default, right? And then my resizable option is grayed out, grayed out. Also, I don't have a title, so let me just put my title here. Set title. I'll just name it Houses. What? Houses. Calculator. Hmm. That's a nice name right there. Uh, okay, let me try to execute it again. Houses calculator. I think it's okay, guys. Um, what else do we need? Okay. So now we need, we need a screen, right? So for our screen, I'm gonna use a, a J text field, right? If I click on it, okay, here's the thing. So inside the JFrame, we have a panel, right? It's like a normal a frame, that like the window frame. And then inside the window frame, you have to have a panel, right? Where you can put your glasses and so on. So in this case, we have a panel here. But the one that they give us by default is uh, it's a border layout panel. But for now, I don't, I don't want any panel. Like I, I just want an absolute uh, layout. Like I can put anything that I want anywhere that I want. So what I'm going to do is to go back to my source and then check under my panel. Yeah. And here you can see that on my J panel, here content pane is what they give, to, I mean the name that they give to my J panel, right? So on my J panel, I've got the set layout set to border layout but i don't want it like i just want uh, an absolute layout so i'm just gonna put null and then go back to my design so let me go back click text field and then i can put it wherever i want right so i'm just gonna drag it through um so this text field basically this is gonna be my screen right where like once you punch your numbers in a calculator i mean the output is gonna come back here like on this J text field. So what I don't like about this J text field is that you guys are not are not supposed to be able to edit it, right? So I'll just click uh, editable to false here and then let me try to launch it. You can see that okay the field is there. But it's not editable. If I leave it with editable you see okay the field is there but it is editable you can write anything that you want there so I don't want that I'm just gonna set it to false uh, let me see I think it's okay mm. okay that's fine uh, bounce Width, let me just put it to 365. It's fine. Let me see. Uh, I don't see much difference, but let me try 370. 
No, I think it's okay. So we've got our screen. Uh, so what else do we need? Uh, we need the buttons, right? So I'm just gonna let me see. I grab my button. I'll just put it right here. Uh, let's try to make four buttons a row. I think I think it will be okay. Let me see. Okay, this is the process that's gonna take time, right? Like uh, having to drag some stuff and putting them here. Okay, let me just copy paste it and I'm gonna just hold on. I'm gonna have my second button here. Let me just copy paste uh Add one here. Hmm. I'll have to resize my buttons, right? Okay. Uh, the width of my buttons here is 89. Let me try to make it 85. 85, I think we'll do. Delete this ones. And also, let's make our text to be. 20 and bold we'll fix it so I'll just copy okay let me just uh, launch the application and see are they aligned hmm, not 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 hmm. let me see one. You guys can play around with this. I'm just gonna, yeah, I think they're okay. Um, I'll just copy the same row and then put it just underneath. I'll have the second row, have the uh, third row. How many rows do I want? Uh, Photo and let me just have one button. Yeah, I think this will be the equal sign button. Okay, okay, it's okay. Okay, guys, so once I launch my application, you can see that, that I've got my screen and then, and then the buttons are there also. Not sure if uh, they are aligned, but uh, you guys, you know, as long as you get the information or uh, whatever that you guys need to see, so I think it's okay. So, one another thing is that I don't love the look and feel. Like, this is like the classic uh, Windows look and feel, like, or the Java look and feel. Like, I prefer, for example, if you are using um, Linux, to have a Linux look and feel on your calculator, right? If you are using Windows, uh, to have the same. So I'm just gonna amend my look and feel here. So to uh, have your desired look and feel, we have an option here on object that is called UI Manager. So I'll go to UI Manager and then call a method called Come on, hmm, something happened there. Set look and feel, uh, and then I want our look and feel to be the system look and feel. So depending on the system that you guys are using. So also we have to. Okay, no, I think it's okay because we've got the try catch given to us already. So if we click launch. You will see that the look and feel is quite different. It's not the same anymore. So let's go back, guys. Uh, let's rename our buttons, right? Uh, I'll start with this one, which is going to be the equals to. I'll just put it as equal bt for button. And uh, the text will be just equals to. Let's see. Hmm. 
I think it's okay. Yeah. Uh, what else do we need? Um. Okay, here we can have the the calculations. I think. Okay, let's check. Cause I don't want I don't want the like the same layout as the Windows calculator that we have here. Let me see. If you go like calc and then you launch a calculator. I want us to be different, so I'm just gonna check any other layout, the calculator layout on Google itself. Calculator. Hmm, let me see. Which one should we use? Um, we can use the, hmm, this one. Let me see. Okay, we'll see what to do. Okay, this side I'll have the the the, the functions like. Uh, addition, subtraction, and multiplication, and so on. So let me start with this one. I'll make it addition. So the variable name will be plus bt, which is uh, plus button, and then the text uh, for the same will be that plus text, and then I'll go to the next one, which is minus uh, minus bt. Which is for button uh, the text itself let's see uh, I'm just gonna put minus there let's go to the other one we have uh, addition right Maybe. or multiplication let's try multiplication first I'll just put it as multi bt and the value will be the x in this case or so if we do the normal multiplication it, it, it's gonna give us an, an asterisk but we don't want an asterisk you can just put x there division and also the symbols guys I'm not gonna give you the symbols option here like we'll use the normal ones um okay, I'll explain it later let me just say VIP PT and division will be like this okay well, the symbols uh I know that you guys are used to uh, like the normal symbols that we know. For example, for division, we have this symbol, right? For division. But in this case, I'm not going to go and then try to get this kind of symbols. Like I'm going to use the, the normal ones that we know. Um, like if you are in programming, you know that this uh, forward slash is a division, right? Okay, let's see what else do we need. Um, Okay, we need a dot. Uh, this allows for the double of the numbers that have uh, the remainder. I don't know how to explain it, but you guys understand, right? These are not the discrete numbers. These are continuous numbers like 2.0, 2.5 or something like that. So I'll just put a uh, dot. Oh, sorry. The variable name. Uh, dot bt which is for button and then go to text itself and then just put that dot in the text itself so yeah, it's fine what else do i need um zero zero i think is okay or should i put it here let me just put it here zero bt and then uh the symbol or the number for it is zero. Uh, here we can have the positive and minus option. For example, if the number is positive and one are neg negative, uh, you will click on this option. So I'll just name it pause bt. Um, plus or minus. Right? Then here we have one, one bt, and then hmm, come on. Okay, we'll have number one on the bottom itself. So let me go to the second one. Come on, okay, second one, and the variable name would be two. 2bt uh, 
and the text will be two. So say next to apply. So, takes a bit of time, but uh, I will just sit here and then do it for you guys. Number four, we need a uh, little sign. That's why in most companies you've got the programmers that actually deals with the front end and then those ones that deals with the back end. But it's a programmer you have to know like both like front end, back end. Right? What is then here? Set five ET. So this is the front end part that I'm dealing with right now. Uh, let's go to number six. Also, you can uh, create the same GUI or graphical user interface using the code. But in this case, I just uh, chose an option to use, uh, you know, like the window builder because it's not going to take much time, right? Uh, let's go to seven. Seven BT, which is for button. Let's see, the text itself will be seven. Okay, we go to the eight one. Uh, at least we're getting the eight BT. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Okay, uh, the ninth one, let's put it as 9BT, and then the text will have it here as 9. So, okay, I think we are done. Um, let me just check it here. Yeah, so here comes the wonderful part. Then we have to make sure that. Once you click each and every button, like it, it have to be uh, visible on the screen that we've created here or our text field. Okay, so let's start with zero. You can just uh, right click here and then choose an option of adding an event handler. So event handler can choose an action handler or like anything that, that you want, right? But in this case, will be dealing with action like once you click that button what should happen right so here what should happen is that okay let's go back to our design we have created a text field right and a text field can be editable right and then when you okay the text field when it's editable Whatever that you type inside the text field is a string. A string is a, it's a bunch of variables like uh, starting from a, I mean, alphabets and numbers. You can type anything that you want on a string, right? Uh, it's not an integer, like a number or so. So now let's go back to our okay, code again. So now what I want is that, okay. I need to, to create a variable inside this option, for example. Uh, I'll name it, um, let me see. I'll just name it num for number equals to. So here, what's going to happen, right? On a calculator, someone might, okay, you might type uh, one and three, and now you wanna put zero here, right? So now in this option, what's gonna happen is that before we uh, include zero in the text field itself, we need to take whatever info that you have on the screen itself, or whatever value that you have on the, text field itself 
then we add our own zero to that value or we append let me just put it like that append right so i'm creating a variable called num which is a string it accepts the uh, alphabet and numbers so now what i'm gonna need to do is then okay i need to firstly get whatever info that i have on there what happened there i'll check it whatever info that i have on my screen right and then add zero to it so text field is text field hmm, it's yours let me see something happened here okay now i think it's because of the exception over here just this text field i'll just i'll just name it string let me just name it string right so that that one okay so what i'm gonna need is to say okay screen dot get text right plus then i need my button dot get text i don't want to say zero i just need to get whatever that is written on the button itself so i'll just say plus my zero bt which is my variable name here when i de declare my button dot get text so i'm able to ask i mean uh i'm able to capture both of them because my variable is a string itself and another thing I'm gonna get an exception because uh, the Java Java will want me to uh, show that this button that I've created I'm not gonna change it anyway. So to show that I'll have to use a keyword final. So you see once I type final, the zero exception, the zero button exception is gone, right? So now I've got my variable here, which is now. So I need to show it on the screen itself so i'll just say screen dot set text it's a string right screen screen dot text text so reset text <laughs> set text equals to i mean set text yeah to num which is my variable so if i run my play what happened there's something that happened now um, let's see something happened while i was doing mm, okay it's because i renamed this uh Right, uh, because uh, I named my text field screen, so that's why I was getting that exception. But now let's see, it should be okay. Launch it, okay. So if I click zero, you see that zero is there, but it's on the left side, and then the text itself is not desirable, so I'll just fix it now. So if I go back to design, right and i click on that text field i've got my options here like the text i want it to be let's say 28 and then it should be bold right um, and also the text should be on the trailing which is on the the right side oh yeah so let me go back um let me just launch my calculator again if i click zero you can see that zero is on the right side let me increase my text once more i think 34 will be okay launch it click zero zero is there right um so now we need to do the same thing for the other numbers right um let's go to one I click uh, add action listener or action performed and then I can copy the same thing here 
Did I cut it? No, copy, 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 sorry. And make my button final. Uh, add one button. I'm gonna do the same follow. So if I click one, one is if I click zero, it's there, right? So sorry guys. Let me see. Add action. Perform here. Yeah. Paste. Two eighteen. Yes, two bit of final. Uh, guys, if you have any questions, questions, please just let me know. Add event handler action perform. Go back, uh, put final on the J button itself, and then just rename your variable name again here yeah. uh, it's gonna be three three bt yeah number four let's just edit first Five BT, I think. Yeah. Mm, number six. So uh, let's see. Number seven. Make it final. J button for now. Nine BT. Um. Okay, what else do I need? Okay, okay, this dot, we can just do it first. Exception somewhere. Action listener, let's check. Six B T final. Okay. So zero point one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's working. So now I need to come back to um this calculations and so on. So we have to use logic here, right? So once you click plus, what should happen? Okay, let me just check here. Okay. We need to use our logic. Once someone clicks plus, right? It's like we are adding uh, two numbers. So we're going to need number one plus number two so we need these variables one and two and also we need an answer variable right that's gonna be displayed on the 
on our text field itself. So, um, okay, I'm gonna go for a simple method, but uh, I, I hope that you guys will understand. But if you don't understand, just give give me a call or inbox me or something. So what I'm gonna do is. Firstly, we need to get the number that that's on the sorry how to put it okay before someone clicks plus for example let me just open this calculator here. before you click plus you you're gonna click the first number right like nine then you click plus so I want a variable that will hold nine first. So that variable, I'll just name it first number. I'll have to create a variable. I can create integer, but uh, remember we have numbers that has uh, commas and I mean, so let's say the remainders and so on, right? So I'll choose to go for double. Double allows for numbers that has remainders and so on. So I'll just say double uh, first first number. Let me just put it like that, right? So now, when someone uh, before they click plus button or add button, we need to capture that first number that is given there. So I'll just say uh, first number. equals to um, because uh, because the the text field or the screen that we have created like the text field it accepts the string string as it like like string values right but here I've uh, created a double type number which have to accept the string values. So what I am going to do is to convert that string value into a double itself. So to convert, I use a method called double dot pass, pass double to what? To a string that I'm going to get. So I'm passing a double to whatever information or data that I have that I have on the text field or the screen field that I have. Yeah. Screen dot get text. This is before I click plus, right? So it's like I've captured the first number that is there on this variable first number, right? And once I've captured that, the person will click plus, right? But uh, what I can do is to clear my screen screen dot set text. I'll just put it as blank, and then um, what else do I need? Um, we need to show that we, we are adding, right? So we need to capture or we need to have an operation that's going to show, for example, if you're going to click, okay, 9 plus 3, for example, when we click equals to, equals to, from equals to button, that's where we're going to compute our calculations. So what I'm going to show here is that we, we're going to have an operation, uh, or operator let me just put it as operator right a variable called operator um, I can name it uh, what should I, let me see yeah let me just say it is string string operator go back to my edition option uh, operator equals to because it's a string I just put plus inside the brackets right 
so i'm not gonna add anything here here what i have is that i've got my first number and then i've got my operator it's like i've got my number nine then the option of plus to show that i'm gonna add right so i'm gonna copy the same thing to the minus option uh button guys if you don't understand anything just let me know because i'm trying to explain it like in this simplified uh formal description itself but if you don't understand just let me know so in this case uh the minus will have the minus uh, symbol what else do we need the multiplication like in programming what you need to have actually is the logic like you have to use your logic that's why most of the time if a person is going to study IT or computer science or what yeah anything related to IT or computers um, normally they will require certain marks especially on maths or physical science like one of those two like uh, the subjects that shows that you you can actually think uh, and use your logic to resolve something right because uh, programming is about uh, resolving uh, um, an issue using the language itself like in this case case we are using java so i'm creating a calculator using java language so i have to resolve and compute and calculate so when i mean to do that you require to use logic right to think let me just put it like that. Did I? Okay, I've got my X there. Let's go to my division. Right. What else do we need? I'll come back to that once. So let's go to equals to. <clears throat> So yes, the thing, what's going to happen here? Remember we have the first number, right? On um, each and every calculation, like the plus or minus or multi the multiplication or something, no? division. We have uh, a first number, but now we need to have uh, a second number, right? Whereby we're going to do our calculations between the first number and the second number. So here on the equals to what we need to do again, remember we have captured number nine, right? And a person has clicked plus, right? Now we need number two, then we calculate. So what we're gonna do here is to capture that second number. which is a string so I'll just say double dot pass and then um, string dot get text okay I've created this first number only so I'll just create the second second number right which is double also so we've got this okay the first and the second number right so we need to check here in order to check your conditions uh, to compare some variables you need to you can use if statement right so in this case I'm gonna check if my operator remember I've captured the operator on each and every function or on each and every button like under the action listener or action performed method so if my operator equals to plus i'm not sure that i should put it inside uh, let me see I'm, i will see if my operator is the same as plus then i need to add my numbers right um, So I'll create uh, 
a variable that will hold my numbers or answer just say double answer because first number and second number they are of type double so that's why i'm creating a double type answer here so i'll just say if someone have an operate okay if someone clicked plus then our answer is gonna be equals to first number plus second number right and then what's gonna happen hmm. um now we need to format because this is a double it's a number right so for us to display the <clears throat> To display this number or this double on our screen we need to format it to string because the text the text uh, field accepts the string right so what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna say answer let me see answer dot or equals to is this string format i think Sorry guys. String format. Then the option <clears throat> we accept everything. <coughs> Sorry. And then <clears throat> so <Sorry> guys. <clears throat> I can't even explain now. Okay, I took my double, which is a number, and then I've um, converted the same to string, or I've, I've formatted the number to a string variable. I'll try to explain this one. Oh, you guys, uh, how to explain this? Just hold on. I think I did something. Mm -mm. Just hold on, guys. We need to use our logic here. Wait. Uh. It wants me to convert that to string. Instead of doing that, let me create a string variable and name it final final answer. And then what I can do in this case, I'll just say final answer. I don't want to, yeah. Final answer, which is a string, equals to this answer, which is converted or, or formatted to string, right? So then what we're gonna do is to set the same text on the, our screen to final answer. Guys, if you don't understand this, just let me know and I'll try to explain it. So let's test it, guys. 2 plus 3 equals to 5, right? Hmm. I don't have I don't have a button of clearing my screen. I don't know why I missed it. Hmm. Where can I create it? Okay, I'll, I'll create additional button, guys. Uh, where can I put it? This is a... Uh, let me copy this one. 
and then put a button here I'll name it CE or C for DF C put here screen and then sorry C and here I can see can say CDT right and then uh, let me check something okay we've got our C there so what's gonna happen is that when we click that C button it should clear our screen right um okay let me go to the C so what should happen C should just see our screen yeah screen dot set to nothing right so I'll show you guys I'm gonna run eight plus 3 11 right clear so it's gone right um so we need to check another operator which is the minus one so i'm just gonna copy wait wait wait, wait where is it where's my equals to option okay so if operator is plus then do this right but if it's else if the operator is minus what should we do so else if allows us to check for another condition else if the operator or operation or yeah option is uh, minus then uh, I'll just copy this and then we minus right we can test the same let me check 9 minus 3 is 6. Uh, clear. Hmm. Um, 20, 18 minus 1994. 24, yeah. Um, yeah. So let's do the multi multiplication again. Else if operator equals to x, because remember we captured x there, then what should happen? First number should time is second number. Let's test it. 5 times is 6 is, oh sorry, sorry, sorry guys, 2 times is 3 is 6, 2 times is 8 should be 16, 9 times is 1 is 9, so, and the division part we have to, else if operator Let's do the division. Then what should happen? Mm. Just copy the same thing and then change our calculation here. Right? We'll run it. Uh, 8 divided by 6, 1. Here's the thing, guys. I never allowed the the remainder, so I need to fix that. I need to fix that. Let me see. Six divided by three is two. Hmm. Should I say zero here? Let me check something, guys. <clears throat> Just hold on, guys.
and to read this life like we thought about it. To test, to please. Why did he give me this? What happened? Nine divided by six. It's giving me an error here. Oh. Okay, I want to check something first as well. Nine divided by nine. It's giving me an error. Mm. Nine divided by nine. One. I need to check, guys. Just hold on. Just hold on, guys. Okay, we never allow. Mm. If I need a string dot value of not boolean value of double, it should give me this one. Nine divided by two. 4.5 yeah so in this case guys I used the same double but uh, I took the double like results and then converted the same to string so that's why I'm able to to get my let me try it also 9 divided by 4 2.25 right What else? There's something that I haven't tested. 3.0 plus 3.6. Okay, guys. <laughs> I need to go and watch a game. So I've given you like the basic of creating a calculator. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to share the code and then I need you guys to work around uh, the numbers, the numbers that has uh, like that, that, okay. Here's the thing. I need you guys to work around this dot option, right? Like uh, if you click dot, but you're not supposed to have another dot. This is an error itself, right? So I need you guys uh, to make sure that uh, a person doesn't get to click, I mean to have the option to have several dots or multiple dots at the same time. You are allowed to have one dot and then the same number that you have captured, it will be regarded as a double number, right? Um, I need you guys to try it and then uh, just let me know. And also, what I'm gonna do again is to have the EXE of this uh, application. Like for example, what I'm talking about is that you you can launch an application anytime you want. Like you you just click on the link or the EXE link and then you'll be able to launch or access the application itself. Close this, right? Uh, for example, if you're gonna check from a house calculator, you guys should be able to to have it or should be able to install. So I I'm gonna show you that option also. But for now, I think this is enough. Uh, you guys can just let me know if you have any questions, and then we'll see. Thank you. Uh,